Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with this week's short video for YouTube subscribers and Twitter followers where we take a look at a market that is uh, potentially uh, coming into a good trade opportunity in the next week. And I think we've identified a pretty good one with the euro or the dollar, depending on whether, uh, which one you want to trade. Um, before we get started with that, though, let me show you something. If you've been following my videos for a while, you know that I'm very practical oriented. Uh, I actually trade, unlike most people that do advisory, their Twitter accounts or their YouTube accounts, I really trade. This is me, this is the Global Cup Trading Championship that Robbins Trading Company puts on each year. And uh, here I am uh, as of last Thursday, I'm up 130% on this. That's since last June through last Thursday. This is a one year competition and it's real money, real trading, real time. Uh, I hope that you find these videos that I do very practical for you to, and you can learn trade strategies, whether you trade the market that we talk about in the video or not, you can apply what you learn to every market and every time frame. So once again, it's all really practical oriented. So let's pay attention because I think we've got a good trade setup coming up this coming week. Well, this is the Euro monthly chart, and it begins back in 2008, and it's right up to date through the time I'm recording this. And for those of you who are familiar with Elliott Wave, and if you're not, you should learn at least the basics, uh, is that coming into the 2022 low, a beautiful five-wave decline. And more than likely, this uh, September 2020, uh, excuse me, 2022 low has completed a major bear trend in the euro and it's turning around again more than likely everything's about probabilities but it's turning around and the euro is likely to be net bullish for not just a few weeks or a few months but probably for a few years that means the dollar is likely to be net bearish for that time period. So this long-term analysis is for another day, but I just wanted you to uh, see that that's the possibility. So what we always do, no matter what time frame we're looking at, if we believe we understand the position of a market, then we go, we ask the question, so what should happen now if that's the case? If this is a multi-year low, what should occur? Well what should occur is we should have what's called an impulsive trend coming out of that low. Not a corrective trend, but an impulsive trend. That's the first sign that the higher time frame trend has reversed. So let's go to the weekly data. This is weekly euro. And let's just take it from that September 2022 low. The advance off of that low, again, Elliott wave wise is just a beautiful five wave advance into the February high. And that's what we want to see if the larger time frame trend is reversing. So we look at this as a 1RA. So at the very least, following this high in early February, there should be a correction. Uh, that would be a 2RB correction. And then we'd have one more, at least one more advance to a new high. We call that a wave 3RC. So we, we want to use our time, price, and pattern strategies to identify if a market uh, is completing a correction. Because what follows a correction? Resumption of the trend to a new extreme. So let's look at this weekly data. Then we'll go to the daily data and look at the specific trade setup. Is that more than likely, again, this is a 1 or A high. This decline is probably an A. And potentially, last week, completed a wave B of a probable ABC correction. Now, every, corrections, every correction is not an ABC, but we look at all corrections should be at least three sections. So we can begin to label them A, B, and then a C. It may go on to be a more complex correction, but at the least, we would identify three sections. Uh, and then again, if this is the completion of an impulse trend, typically a correction against that, this potential ABC, would uh, be complete by the 62% time retracement. We do time retracements like we do price retracements. That's the near the third week in April, around April, the week ending April 21st. We also have in that week is the 100% alternate time projection. And just a week later is the simple low to low to low in the weekly data. So what we can say, let's make this simple. 
<laughs> is that if this is the end of a wave one or eight in Elliott wave terms, and we're looking to identify the completion of an A, B, C wave one, uh, two or B, um, it should be complete by the second half of April. So second half of April is about three weeks away. So if, again, making a wave two or B correction should have at least three weeks before it's complete. Let's go to the daily data and see where we're at, keeping in mind probable A, B, and then we would probably have one more section to test or exceed this wave A low. So here's the Euro daily data, and it's the closing data. So the, the top here in February, I should put the 1 or A up here so we know from comparison of what was on the weekly chart. We can see this decline into the, and this is the closing, daily closing data. A lot of times I like to look at the closing data because it filters out all that intraday volatility. Uh, coming into the March 8th low, nice five wave decline for a probable wave A. That's what we're showing on the weekly chart. And then this is the beauty of this coming up uh, into the last week's high is that probable A, B, and C. And last week, uh, following the Wednesday high, the day after the, in the closing high, the day after the Fed announcement, is the euro made what we call a dual look back daily momentum bear reversal. So typically that means a high is uh, on the short term is complete and the market will be sideways to down for four or five days or so. And it just made the bear reversal. So this momentum cycle should have a few more days sideways to down. So the important thing to do here, is this an A, B, and C? If it is, that would mean the euro is in an immediate position for a short trade or long on the dollar for a probable continuation to below the March low. So everything seems to be in place to have completed that, including some time factors. Let's go back to this February high, one day after the last FOMC meeting. Here we are in March, uh, the March high, so far at least, one day after the Fed announcement. So we will find in the euro and the dollar frequently there's reversals within a day or two of these Fed announcements. And when a market is coming up into a momentum cycle reversal at some a pattern potential completing a pattern, and there's some other time factors, in this case, simple high to high to high, right on the day of the top so far. And also the day of the top so far was the 38% time retracement. So what we can say is that the euro was in an almost ideal position to complete an ABC correction. If, it, if that's the case, the euro would then continue eventually to decline to below the March low. So a lot of distance on the downside uh, over probably the next two or three weeks, if not more, uh, before that higher time frame, wave two or B is correct. So I look at the euro as in an immediate position for a short trade long on the dollar. What will confirm that this advance indeed is a correction and not the beginning of a bull trend? Well, it closed below the March 14th swing high close when it got labeled as a wave A. That's what we call closing overlap. It indicates that this advance is a correction and that as of March 22nd, it was in a position to have completed that correction. So if you want to be really safe about a short trade in the euro long and the dollar is you can wait until a close below the March 14th closing close, which was the, what I got labeled as uh, wave A uh, swing high close. So a great position, I think, for a trade that would probably last two or three weeks uh, net bearish in the euro, net bullish in the dollar. And then, of course, when this potential wave C is complete, then that would be uh, what we call a higher time frame corrective low, and it would be a great position on the long side. But that's probably a few weeks away into the second half of April. So there you have it. Fantastic. I think it's a fantastic setup. Very low capital exposure. You don't have to do highly leveraged Forex. You can do an ETF like long, the UUP, 
uh, if you want, because the dollar is just going to go inverse to what's here. So check it out, check your charts, and just remember position size is really important. That's how you control your capital exposure is by your position size. So you never, never have to risk or have capital exposure more than about 2 or 3% of your account. That's it for today, my friends. Thanks for checking out our video. If you want some more information, uh, check down below in the comments section where we got some links where you can get more updates for no cost from our DT Traders News, where you can sign up for on our website at dynamictraders.com. That's it. Take care. Be safe. Have some fun. And it's Robert Miner over and I'll be back with you in a week or two with another update.